Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at Radar Horizon, uh, something most folks are probably familiar with, but are looking for some sort of way to be able to beat, so to speak. And we're going to look at some of the different strategies involved in kind of defeating it, as well as sort of understanding exactly what you can do to understand, you know, kind of how to play with it a little bit, especially if you're on the defending side too. So let's go ahead and take a look at our scenario real quick. So what we have here is we have a little radar surveillance platform here, and what I've done is I've actually edited their sensors real quick. So we have a TPS-43, obviously, I like the TIPS-43, it's like my go-to radar for everything, which has a spectacular range here, if I actually would hold this out real quickly, you can see it goes out to be about 240 nautical miles. We have another TPS-43, which is uh, sitting up here, this is a Lasolo, if I recall correctly, over down here in South Africa, by the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly flip on the scenario, and now uh, we're going to see kind of what happens. All right, delightful. So what just happened? We notice there's a number of different contacts. As a matter of fact, if I zoom on in these little contacts here, you'll probably notice that the first contact was uh, designated, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom here, at a distance of just about the radar um, distance that this particular contact radar can pick up. Our next contact showed up at about the same distance as well. Our next contact showed up at a little bit shorter of a distance. The final one, much shorter. The next one, significantly shorter. And then finally, the last one, you can see the last two here, were significantly shorter as well. Now, what do these contacts have that are different? They are at different altitudes. As a matter of fact, our 36 and our 60,000 mile, or 60,000 feet rather, a particular contacts, as you can see, were the first ones we picked up. And then the last one we detected, of course, was the one that was extremely low. I believe this one was at an altitude of, yeah, 104 feet above ground level. So as you know, on all radars are limited mostly by line of sight. If you want to think about the world for a second, if I put my radar right over here, we could not see through all this beautiful rock and spot a target that was on the other side of things like this. Uh, the term for that one is radar horizon, which like I said, I'm sure most people are familiar with. So what we're going to be interested in doing today is finding out how we can optimize our aircraft flight pattern to take advantage of the fact that that radar horizon exists. Now, there's one thing I do want to give you a quick little warning about, and that's the fact there are radars out there that can actually see over the radar horizon. Those are called OTH receivers. It's over the horizon. There's actually quite a few radars that can ricochet basically radar beams off the atmosphere in order to see very, 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 very long distances. But again, this is kind of cool how this works. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, switch my, we'll reload the scenario. Grab our little example. I always use this exact same one. Grab this one. Um, we're going to go ahead and delete everybody. And we're going to leave just one of our beautiful little uh, MiG-31s here. And what we're going to do is we're going to design a flight path for this guy so that he does not get picked up by radar. Now, many of you are immediately saying, oh, that's easy. Boop, flight path complete. The problem with that, though, is if we travel at low altitudes, and not only are we going to be restricted in speed, but we're also going to be restricted in fuel consumption. Now, if this aircraft were not a MiG-31 and say it's an F-16 without fuel tanks, you could imagine how limited our range would actually be should we choose to fly this particular flight plane the way that we have it. So one of the problems we need to solve is how do we know where the radar horizon ends and how do we know what altitudes to do if we don't have access to it? Now, some of you are like, wait a minute, um, command modern operations, they got a thing for that. If you click on the thing and you come up to the thing and you push the thing, oh, look at that line of sight, boop, we win. Yes, you're absolutely 100% correct to that extent. However, uh, one of the problems this does not tell us is that let's make our flight on target 2,000 feet or 5,000 feet, first refresh, is we don't have access to this particular uh, line of sight tool when we are on the other team. The only way we'd be able to identify this is if we knew exactly where this was. And if we don't know exactly where this is when we're estimating, we need to come up with a different method. Now, fortunately for us, we can do the math. Let's assume that this target radar platform is uh, somewhere down here. Let's call this a uh, target radar platform. Why not, right? Again, this is just an assumed position. We could use ESM to try to triangulate this. And let's say we want to sneak up on it so we get to a minimum distance while maximizing our fuel consumption. Now, we know that the maximum range of this particular one is 240 nautical miles. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here and we'll call this, whoops, make sure you do this correctly. We'll call this 240 NM max range. Again, if your intelligence was a little bit better, we could probably take advantage of this. So now we're going to split the difference here. We're going to pick one that's, um, we'll call this about, we'll call this about, let's see here, what do we get for distance here? Control D. That's, uh, let's call 115, 115 NM range. And press OK. So now what we're going to do is we're going to order up our airplane to make our way to this and try to stay under the radar while maximizing its capability to fly at high altitude. So what is going to be the magical distance or altitude I need to travel at? Well, first things first, I'm going to grab my character here. I'll go ahead and pause ourselves. I'm going to put one of them here. I'm going to put my next one here. I'm going to put my next one here. And I'm going to put the next one over here. So what is my initial maximum altitude? Well, time to do some math. Whoop. Aha, radar horizon and target visibility calculator. Oh, yeah. So we know that we are at a height of 36,000 feet. And we know that the radar height, hmm, 33 feet. Actually, it's at 32.8048. 
84 or something along those lines. Now you're immediately going, whoa, slow down, chief. How did you know what the radar height was? Well, this is a kind of a cool thing you need to know about command. This guy right here is uh, sitting on the water, which means his radar height is technically zero, right? Not quite. Uh, one of the things you actually see in the database, if I click on this um, tipsy up here, for example, is it'll actually tell you how high up the radar mast is. So this one is a 10 meter, which like I said, is about 32 feet. Now for sea going vessels, it's a little bit more complicated. And if I click here, there's nothing in here about how tall my mast is. You've got this height option, ding, 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 ding. And now we know exactly how high it is. So 10 meters, if that's my mast height, we assume we put a radar at the top of that mast, is about 32 feet. So we know now exactly what altitude we're going to be going to battle with. Now, some of these will not have a height, in which case you're going to have to do a little bit of interpolation and a little bit of experimenting. Okay, back to our little calculations here. Let's see, 36,000 feet is, uh, da, 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 gives us a radar horizon of Surprise! 240 miles, also known as radar target visibility, 240.17 nautical miles. Now, isn't that amazing that that radar was literally designed to target something 36,000 feet away that was 240 nautical miles away? So in reality, the radar actually has a greater range than what you see here. But the reason it's limited is, again, like I was saying, it's based on that radar horizon. Kind of interesting if you actually think about it that way. So we need to get under 36,000 feet at our first waypoint. So let's just estimate we'll do 32,000 feet here. That's going to limit us to uh, 196.45. That's about 200 nautical miles. So now if we did 115 nautical miles, let's work out what that needs to be. Let's see, that's about 60, oh, 25. Oh my gosh, what have I done? 25,000 feet gets us a 201 nautical mile. Again, we're just trying to guesstimate how far we need to be. That's 115. So 201 will come down to, what if we do 12,000 feet? That's 141. 10,000 feet is going to be 125. Looks like 8,000 feet. Ah, about 116 nautical miles. We need to be at an altitude. We, the altitude we need to be at is going to be 8,000 feet or less. Now, here's one of the tricky things about command that makes everybody positively absolutely nutters. And that's the fact that you don't descend to the altitude until you hit this waypoint. So if I order him to do 8,000 feet here, I've already been spotted because I'm whatever my previous altitude actually was. So maybe what we want to do here is I'm holding down the control key, by the way, is I'm just going to add an intermediate waypoint that's going to give us some capability here. So this is going to be the point when I want to descend down to 8,000 feet. Whoop, I hate it when it does that. 8,000 feet. Delightful. So we know that we need to be at 8,000 feet by this point. So I'm descending a little on the early side. Now we just need to calculate what altitude we need to be when we hit that point. So that's 177 nautical miles. Let's just sneak in here. We'll do, I'm just estimating real quickly, 15,000. We can actually go higher than that. 18,000. There's 177. So we need to be at 18,000 feet when we hit this point. So that means that uh, we don't want to set this to 18,000 feet. If we did that, we've already missed it. We want to set the previous point to manual override 18,000 feet. So now we're gonna start at our current altitude, which is 36 grand. We're gonna hit the max range, but we wanna be under 36,000 feet. So let's just uh, go ahead and estimate it to be about 32,000 feet. Go ahead and dial that in now. So we're at 32,000 feet, then we're gonna dip it down to 18,000 feet to be in time for hitting this one, where we're gonna dip down to 8,000 feet, which is gonna put us in time for this one, which is gonna to have to be very low. Let's go and take half of that real quick. That's a 60 nautical miles. I'm guessing that's gonna be about 1,000 feet or less. Uh, yeah, it's about 1,500 feet. Wow. So we have to actually take this one now and order this one to basically drop down to minimum altitude here. So we can actually be a little bit more safe and dial in 1,500. So now what we're going to do is rather than traveling at the same altitude, we're going to be dipping down kind of like my little uh, mouse is kind of going like this. So hypothetically, before we get to this target, we're going to be at a pretty hefty altitude. So what I'm actually going to do is I'll split the difference on that one again. Again, I'm holding down the control key. Tap the F2, and we're going to get down to minimum altitude. So I have plenty of time at high altitude. Now let's take advantage of what we're doing here. So let's do afterburner for my first waypoint. My second waypoint, we're at 18,000 feet. That's going to be a little hard on the jet engine there. Now that we drop all the way down, we're going to do our cruise speed. We're going to hold on to that cruise speed at our next waypoint. And obviously, uh, when we cross the last one, we want to spend as little time here as possible. We'll step up to afterburner, and then when we come to the last one, we'll drop back down to cruise. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go fast, go down, slow down, speed up, speed up, and burst by our target. Let's see if it almost works. I guarantee you that I've calculated something slightly different. But again, we're going to do the whole scenario from the other guy's perspective. So let's grab radar, make sure the radar's flipped on. Let's try it. 
Ah, we picked him up early. Let's see what happened. Where did we go wrong? Uh, 7,690 feet. What distance did we pick him up? 115 nautical miles. So in this case, if you remember our waypoints that we selected, the one that we had previous, that 8,000, we should have put something immediately after it that was a little bit lower. Ah, we got so close. But notice how far and how fast. Oh, notice we didn't pick him up again until we got close. And the bam, he rips by us at high speed. See how effective that is? But at the same time, is it wasn't really that much math on our part. Now, there's a second part to this, and I just want to kind of share this with folks, too. And again, our mistake there was 8,000 was a little on the high side. I should have been a little bit more careful. There's actually a really nice chart which gives you the radar horizon by a lot of nautical distance. But again, it's going to be offset by the height of the detecting platform. Okay, so now what we're going to do is that we're going to mix things up a teeny tiny bit. I'm going to reload the scenario now that you can see one of the methods you can get a little bit sneaky. And again, we went really fast and we also saved tons of fuel because we spent so much time at altitude. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and clean up all my little aircraft here. I'm going to save my 36,000 footer. Actually, I'll save my 12,000 footer. Delete that one, delete that one. Let me go ahead and grab this one. I want three of these. Thank you all. I'm going to order him to go here. I'm going to order him to, oh, what have I done? Now I've done it. Order him to here, go here, and order him to go over here, and go ahead and order him to go over here. Again, assuming it's a he, I don't actually know, it's an airplane. So we're going to switch back to the other side real quick. I'm actually going to disable that radar we were just looking at a minute ago. Let's go to this one real quick, shut him off, grab this one, turn him on, boop. And now we are detecting. So let's go ahead and unpause, and uh, let's see what happens this time. Ah, we picked up everybody immediately. What are the altitudes these guys are traveling at? 36,000 feet. I thought I ordered you folks to go down to 12,000 feet. Ah, you got to be careful because it will automatically reset all your hard work every single time you choose to do anything in this game. So always keep an eye out for stuff like that. Let's go ahead and grab that. Put everybody back from which they came. Go back. Go back. That was not a fair start. Not a fair start. Switch back to him. And they're all gone. Except for these two. All right. So what was the difference between these two aircraft at the same altitude and this aircraft? Well, it wasn't so much a difference as far as altitude goes. It actually was a difference. Let's go ahead and go up to my view options real quick and hit relief layer. It had to do with terrain. Now, for those of you who know this particular region, this is a tremendously mountainous and it's a very, very tall mountains all located here. And now our beautiful radar dish here could not see this guy because there were mountains that were taller than the actual uh, radar itself that could not see through. So even though this particular um, radar here has popped up all the way at a staggering altitude of about 12,000 feet, if I were to flip over to the line of sight tool real quick, take a look at this. <laughs> Look at how limited its line of sight actually is, even though we put it on the top of a mountain. Now, using terrain masking to sneak up on something, that is a video I will save for another day. I just wanted you to be aware of the radar horizon at this particular time so that you could see just how critically important it is to be able to identify those things and be able to work with them quickly so that you can plan attacks that are the best. Now, if you're doing things like missile runs, uh, if you want to be a really, really, really nasty, uh, really, really sneaky commander, you can do things like really, really make all the interceptors run after one guy by having him detected while you send everybody else underneath the radar horizon to basically get that surprise attack in. So meanwhile, the interceptors are over here. Your guys are dropping bombs on this platform here. They have to turn around and run back. But by the time that's happened, you've already extracted yourself from the area in the opposite direction. I've actually seen people who will do altitude profiles, kind of like my little half sine wave here, in order to basically force interceptors to go attack people and waste all their energy with constantly gaining and then regaining that lock backwards. So like I said, I just want to provide you folks with just a little bit of information on the radar horizon to get you thinking just a tiny bit about that. Uh, we'll take a look at terrain masking next time so you can see how you can make the world's most nasty cruise missile strike. But then again, like I said, it's just a fun little limitation. And oh, by the way, watch out for those over the horizon radars because they're not affected by any of this. Enjoy.